when you put it when you put it in, you only take the rivet. Oh, it's right there also on the board. Wait, what is spin rate? Is that the same question? Yeah, it's the same question. It's just with X terms instead of Y. Nice. Last chemistry test, most likely is right there. Hopefully. So. All right. So we were talking about critical temperature, critical pe pressure. All right. Critical temperature, critical pressure. Critical temperature is what? The temperature needed to that can be liquefied. The highest temperature a gas can be liquefied. All right, so we want to change a gas to a liquid. This is a gas that normally exists as a gas. All right? It's not, it's not a gas that has been changed from a liquid already because normally it would be exist as a, a liquid. Take, for instance, water. Okay? Water we can change to a gas. We can change to water vapor by heat. All right? We are not talking about a critical temperature or a critical pressure here. We're only talking about substances that are normally a gas at room temperature. Take for instance hydrogen, oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, gases like that that we can change to a liquid. All right, the critical temperature is the highest. So if I have the temperature that is higher than the critical temperature, can I make it a gas? No, I cannot. All right, that critical temperature is the highest it can be uh, for it to be actually changed to a gas. But I don't need, only need the temperature to change. I also need the pressure. pressure to change. The critical pressure is what? The pressure needed to change the gas, the liquid to a gas. At its critical temperature. At its critical temperature. Okay? Because pressure alone will not do it. All right, so if we talked about the gas yesterday that needed 15 atmospheres. Uh, what was that, oxygen? Let me see if I can back to it again. Or oxygen had needed 50 atmospheres to be able to change it to a gas. I'm sorry, change it to a liquid. All right, just to put oxygen under 50 atmospheres will not change it to a liquid. All right, those, those particles are still moving too fast. So again, our purpose is to slow the particles down, so that's why we need to lower the temperature. So we lower the temperature. All right, the critical temperature for oxygen is 155 Kelvin. 155 Kelvin is the critical temperature. So once we get the Kelvin down to 155, which we discussed yesterday is approximately negative 120 degrees Celsius, then I need to increase the pressure to 50, uh, 50 atmospheres. And then we have it as liquid. All right, take for instance liquid nitrogen. All right, we, we play around with liquid nitrogen all the time. Well, not all the time, but we, we, we can. All right, we can, I can actually get liquid nitrogen and bring, bring it here. Um, and liquid nitrogen, nitrogen has a critical temperature of 126 Kelvin. And it needs 33.5 atmospheres. So if I take liquid nitrogen and put it out on the table, what's going to happen? It evaporates almost immediately. And in fact, when we have liquid nitrogen, I can take liquid nitrogen and throw it across the table, and it's probably going to be a gas before it hits the floor because of the small pressure and the uh, small temperature or the large temperature that it is, that it has. Uh, so uh, maybe this week I might be able to go get some liquid nitrogen, but it, it's pretty expensive. Uh, so I'm not sure if I, I will be able to do that, but possibly. All right. Now, water H2O. All right. Its critical temperature is 647. Kelvin. Okay? And its critical pressure is 28. That don't sound right. What is this called? Water, H2O. I thought the critical temperature was. 
So mostly just for things that are a gas. Negative 0 0.01 Celsius, degrees Celsius. That's what I have in my notes. Mm. That's too low for us. It's not the water up there. I have to look at that. I don't know why they have water like that. What is this? Is he turning the bottom? All right, so we have the critical temperature, critical pressure. If the critical temperature of hydrogen is 33.1 Kelvin, 33.1 Kelvin, pretty cold. If I can lower that lower than, if I can get the temperature of hydrogen to, let's say, 20 Kelvin, do I actually need the critical pressure to be able to change, liquefy that? The critical pressure is 12 atmospheres. So if I can get the critical temperature is 33 Kelvin. No. Critical temperature is what did I say? Did you say 33 Kelvin? Oh yeah, I did. Critical pressure <laughs> is 13 atmospheres. So therefore, if I can get hydrogen at 20 Kelvin, do I need 13 atmospheres to liquefy it? You need more than 13 atmospheres. I need less, right? I need less. Less atmospheres, never mind. Well, take that back. I wouldn't need, yes, less. <laughs> less. So I can actually liquefy it possibly at 10 atmospheres because I get it colder. So again, this temperature is the highest temperature I can have it. I, and at this temperature, I need this pressure. If I lower this temperature, I can lower this pressure to actually liquefy it. Uh, so on page 301 gives us some uh, pressures and temperatures that we can use uh, to be able to change that. Take for instance carbon dioxide, dry ice. All right, the critical temperature is 304 Kelvin. 304 Kelvin, which is approximately how many degrees Celsius? Uh, 31. All right, approximately 31 degrees Celsius. All right, still pretty cold, okay? But the pressure is 72.9 atmospheres. 72.9 atmospheres. And again, I can get some dry ice, and then we can put the dry ice here. You know what happens to dry ice as you set it out, all right? It starts to sublimate, all right? And it makes nice little smoke uh, on the floor uh, as it sinks to the floor because it's more dense than our air. All right, so that's the difference between critical temperature and critical pressure. Anybody have any questions on that? Anybody have any questions on the homework that you did last night? The odd problems. Is 25 false? 25 is false. And is it false because uh, a type of, is a, uh, the hydrogen bond is a type of dipole dipole force, not dispersion? Correct. I was right. Yeah. Um, Wait, the second half of the letters in number three. Because those are ten. Number three, use kinetic molecular theory to explain each observation given. Okay, letter A. Wax melts near the flame of a burning burning candle. The kinetic theory acts because the heat is causing the molecules to move faster, making it melt. All right, so we're raising the kinetic energy such that the kinetic energy is greater than the attractive forces. Is that you're right? Or balance the attractive forces. All right, yes, pretty much. Letter B, liquid water may be converted to, into ice cubes in a freezer. The kinetic theory acts by the molecules become more liquid and unable to move but still vibrate. All right, and why though? Because the kinetic energy is lower than the attractive forces. All right, we, we are subtracting kinetic energy, so therefore the kinetic energy is lower than the attractive forces. Water gradually evaporates from a swimming pool. Um, 
things to look through other folks can uh, glide past each other through the forest because they went to the forest. Who knows? Because the kinetic energy of the water oh, which is right. on the top of the school is greater than the attractive forces that, holds them in that are holding them in place. Okay. That's good. All right. Uh, skip letter C. Ginger ale flows to match the shape of the Ginger glass. Ale. <laughs> Ginger ale. Ginger ale. But why? The forces of the because the kinetic energy, 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 energy and the attack forces mass. Okay, so therefore they are able to flow. And flow. All right, to be more mo to be more mobile and not held rigidly in place. All right, uh, letter E. Water vapor condenses inside house windows on cold days. The vapor falls on the cold window. The vapor warms inside the house and turns into a liquid because the attractor. The kinetic energy matches the attractive energy. The window, you have to, the window, you have to take away the, the kinetic energy, energy, energy from yeah. the water vapor, which makes it condense. All right, so when the water vapor hits the window, as Isaiah said, the kinetic energy is taken away from the uh, window. So therefore, it lowers the kinetic energy of the vapor to be equal, so it changes it to a liquid. Snow gradually disappears even when the temperature remains below freezing. Is this snow because of sublimation in the glacier? All right. And sublimation is because? The, it, there's a, it gains kinetic energy, so the energy is greater than the force. All right. So basically, the kinetic energy is less, um, it is greater than, I'm sorry, it is less than the attractive forces, so it's a solid. And then we, the sun gives it enough kinetic energy to directly change into a gas. Uh, and then letter G, solids and liquids cannot be compressed as much as gases. For example, if there's an air and there's a greater force at hand. Mm, you need something different than that. You yeah. want something with kinetic energy or? Is gas it has the highest it's kinetic it's energy. Gas has more kinetic energy than attractive force as well. It has nothing to do with kinetic um, energy. Uh, well, well just because there's more space in between. Okay. When? The density is when uh, they have different densities. When you have more kinetic energy, the more space you have in between the particles, right? Not necessarily. Think of the think of the arrangements of the particles in a liquid, solid, and a gas. In a, in a solid, they are Converging. closer together and held in place. Oh, the chemical. In the liquid, they are not as close together, but still close together, uh, but able to move around each other. But in a gas, there are large spaces in between the particles. So therefore, why is a solid, and a, a solid and a liquid not compressible? Because the particles are too close to be able to be squeezed anymore. Okay, and basically that's what it is. So it has nothing to do really with the kinetic energy. It, ha it has to do with how close the particles are together. Okay? Any other questions? I am taking pictures today, yes. All right, we are working on the even problems today. So on another piece of paper, you can work on the even problems, please. Do you want this? I will collect them with the odd problems. <laughs> 